Today's guest is Mike Showhead, who is a Persian Jew and the star of Bravo TV's Shahs of Sunset. Woo! The Shahs of Sunset is an American reality television series. The series debuted on March 11, 2012, and it follows a group of Iranian-American friends living in Beverly Hills and the greater Los Angeles area known as Tarangelis, who are trying to juggle their active social lives and upcoming careers while balancing the their families and traditions. Mike is a successful real estate agent in Los Angeles who graduated from UCLA. Welcome to Yentas in the City, Mike. Thank hey, you so Marcy. much. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. I'm going to change my, uh, my, my positioning here. I actually, um, I came to see my parents, so I'm in their backyard um, and uh, drinking some, uh, some Turkish coffee. Oh, I love Turkish coffee. Oh, my God. I, I think I'm the only one who drinks Turkish coffee at 12 o'clock at night and still can go to wow. sleep. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> it's, uh, Mike, it's, it's we, are so, we are so happy that you're here. I want to tell pleasure. you, we represent a lot of clients in the entertainment, but you are my favorite. You are my Jewish buddy. You <laughs> are. <laughs> you are my favorite, too. I learned so much from you uh, over the course of the last couple of weeks. If you want something, you got to go after it. <laughs> That's the Yenta way. The yes, Yenta way. <laughs> but Mike, you. really, all, out of all the Jewish clients that we represent and we deal with in the entertainment business, you are my favorite because you are so authentic. What you see is what you get. Mike doesn't have a hidden agenda. <laughs> I really don't. And people, you know, people, they don't know how to react to that. You know, I just, I'm, I'm myself. If, if I, if I like something or I like someone, I'm, I let them know. And if I don't, I let them know. And it's hard to find authentic people in the world today because everyone has a hidden agenda. Everyone is out for themselves. Right. And I, honestly, I feel if you do good, good will come and just, just stay true to yourself through it all. I, I love that about you because I'm like that. And Ken is my friend of 36 years and people either hate me or love me. <laughs> but what you see, I wear my heart on my sleeve and that's it. <laughs> me too. And I love that about you. And, and you're Thank like you have a friend of 36 years. That's, that's, that's big. Thanks. Relationships Mike. in LA don't last 36 minutes. Right. <laughs> Mike, I want to tell you something. Um, I'll never forget the call. Robert called me up and he said, Etty, Mike, did you watch last night's episode? We have a crisis. And I said, what's going on? He said, he told me about the whole mask, the blue mask. You couldn't go in. And I have a lot of Persian friends who are Jewish and they love Iran. It's, you know, they love all people. They love Muslim people, Christian, just like you. I know you, you love all people. It wasn't a, a religious thing. It was because of what happened to your parents. And I don't know if you watched, uh, you know, the makers of uh, Fauda just came out with a new show called Tehran. Um, Apple TV bought them. And it basically covers the same conflict um, that you faced during mm. that episode. And I had a lot of respect for you because I've watched your shows, we dealt with you. And Robert said, you know, people might get it the wrong way. You know, the, you know what do we do? And I said, you know what? He's so authentic that people will really understand when he explains himself. And you did. And, you know, I watched your interview uh, at the Jewish Journal. Can you elaborate a little bit to our viewers? What does that conflict that so many uh, Jewish Persians feel when, you know, because you love the United States, you love Israel, but you really do love Iran as well. You know, it was, you know. You guys had good life in Iran. Um, you know, I was, I was born in Iran, but I was only about 30 days old when we left. The revolution, there was, there was noise about the revolution happening. I was very fortunate that my mother's father was a well-to-do, wealthy man in Iran, owned several factories, was very intelligent, was well-traveled, left Iran when he was 15. So he knew the law of the land. He, I'd moved to New York at 15 years old, just a little boy by himself, moved to New York. But that's just the type of man he was his whole life. He was a, a pioneer and um, uh, had sent both my uncles, my mom's brothers, to America to study 
at USC. So he knew that if, if he can get us from Iran to America, there's a home waiting for us. He had bought some properties in America because he was very forward thinking. He said, okay, one day I'm going to have my family in America, if not permanently, but at least have a second home because he just loved America. He loved New York. He loved California. Um, so he sent my mom, myself, my aunt, who was just a child as well, just a few years older than me, and my grandmother to the United States, said me and, and my dad, uh, meaning my grandfather and my dad, were going to stay back um, and wait until things blew over from this revolution. And uh, he sent us to America. Um, and news kept coming that, that the revolution is going to stop. It's not going to, the war is going to stop. It's just, it's just something that's going to blow over and it never did. And eventually my uh, grandfather and my father ended up joining us in, in America. And hearing stories of how people were persecuted and jailed and, and killed because of their religion being Jewish really affected me. You know, my, my dad, mom would always talk about wanting to go back to Iran, how life was different then. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was very hard for them. They came to America not knowing anything, just a few bucks in their pocket, not understanding the culture, not understanding the language, and having to survive, really, just to eat. And being, you know, and, and being looked upon in, 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 a, in a weird way because of, uh, because of being Iranian, because of being brown, you know? Yeah. And, and imagine all we would, all people would hear in the United States was the Iran war. They, they thought that all Iranians were terrorists. And my parents didn't know to lie then and say, we're not Iranian. You know, what are they supposed to say? They're speaking Farsi. It's the language that, that you're hearing on the news. Um, so it was a scary time for them, you know? Do you think they still miss Iran? Uh, not anymore. Not anymore. Not, not anymore. I mean, now, now life has completely changed. One second, I'm so sorry. We, we no, have, that's okay. <laughs> I'm on a Zoom call. Don't oh, worry, buddy. My dad, my dad doesn't pay attention. I told him I'm on a Zoom call. He's hangar na hangar. <laughs> said, Dad, I'm going to the backyard. I'm going to be on a Zoom call. Be quiet, okay? It was okay, it's no a problem. Typical Israeli Next person. Thing you know, our, <laughs> our neighbors are here dropping off chairs that they oh. borrow. <laughs> I think, I think now is a great time to transition into the drama of the show. We want yes. to talk about the show. So, you know, Etty, you know that once you go Persian, there's no other version, Etty. That's, that's what they say. My, 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 Etty, Etty and I one, one, one quick singing. second. One, one, one quick second. One second. Mike, Mike, I love you, Mike. I, so you have I know exactly what you did. You went to your dad like this because my mom is on the call right now. I told her I'm going to be on a Zoom call and she's calling and I'm like, mom, I can't talk. So you probably said, dad, I love you, but I'm on a Zoom call. <laughs> and I don't want to be disrespectful because I really loved our neighbors. They're, my parents' neighbors are the best. They come to all of our functions, but you know, sometimes it's just like, dude, Get it together. Come on, man. You know what I mean? It's, I just need 20 minutes. <laughs> 20 minutes. So, Give me know, some time. I want to tell you, Mike, that Etsy and I, we are huge super fans of Shaw's, of Set, and of Bravo TV. And, I love you guys. Thank you. So, Etsy, if you had to give me one word to describe this past season of Shaw's, what would you say? The Israeli way, incredible. <laughs> yes. Incredible. I would say it was insane. It was insane. It was just another level. What, what yes. would you say, Mike? What would you say? You know, the, the, my group of friends do not cease to amaze me. Um, this season was, was explosive. It was crazy. There was a lot of drama, um, a lot of hurt feelings. Um, you know, very entertaining for people watching, but for being someone involved who loves both sides of, 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 of the fight, it's hard because regardless of who wins or whose truth is real and who's, 
who was the one who was gossiping and lying, we all lost as a group of friends because right, right. the friendships were damaged. Right. And even if yeah. I try my hardest to make it work, it'll never be the way it was. Wow. You know, you, you were quoted as saying, like the economy, friendships, relationships are cyclical. Um, and I say, like, what the heck happened to this friend group this past season? This season, almost everybody had issues with Reza, including you. And why, why is everything so black and white with Reza? Why? I can't speak for him. Um, I can tell you what I know about him. And that's that he's a really genuinely, he's a good guy. He has a big heart. He's very loving. He's very caring. He's very um, bigger than, than life with his character. Um, but there's a side to him that most people don't see. And that's that he's very sensitive. Um, and because he's so sensitive, if he feels betrayed, he will go above and beyond to get revenge. Wow. Yeah. I have to ask you, why do you think Reza feels so much anger and betrayal? And are they talking? Is Reza and MJ talking now or no? And yes. Like, yes. They're, 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 yeah, wow. they're, they're, Yay. We're, we're, we're working on, on helping build that friendship again. Um, 30 years of friendship. Wow. 30 years of secrets and 30 years of gossip and 30 years of stories and, and amazing memories, you know? Right. Um, when Reza came out as being gay and, and, and deciding to tell the world, hey, this is who I really truly am. I've been faking and I've been fronting about, about the reality of my life and I'm ready to be open and honest with people. Imagine having to wait 21 years um, to say that, you know what? For instance, you don't like a certain food. And your parents keep putting that food in front of you and you have to pretend like you like it and eat it even though it, it disgusts you, right? right? So it was the same with him. He couldn't really be real with anyone. He was gay and he had to pretend like he wasn't because he didn't want his family to get upset. He didn't want his friends to be upset. And um, when he decided to finally come out, the first person he told was MJ. The second person he told was MJ's dad. Oh, wow. So imagine coming out to your best friend's parents. That's a big oh. deal. Oh, you gave me goosebumps. Oh, my God. Right? So Did he they're, tell they're, Vida? Did he tell Vida also? He told them both. Oh. Oh, wow. Because he, he was like, I need to tell somebody. And, you know, he wanted to see how they would react first before he goes and tells his parents because he just had that moment where he's like, okay, I need to be honest with myself and I need to come out and I can't live this lie anymore. So, I mean, it's, it's much deeper than any of us would ever understand. Yeah. Um, because, you know, I, I had a friend come out to me and, you know, he was closet and I would never have known that he's gay. Right. And when he told me, it was shocking to me. And I cried and cried and cried because I imagined the, the hardship he had to go through trying to keep this lie um, alive because he didn't want anyone to be judging him. So I, I have a deep connection to Reza. I understand him. Um, I love him. And um, to have a real friendship is to understand somebody and, and know where they're coming from and not judge them on what they've done, but judge them on their character. So. Right, especially the Persian and Jewish community, because we, we just interviewed a young adult who is gay, and we said, why don't you come out? Why didn't you come out? And they said, exactly, they said, you know, you're not a community. They're not going yeah. to accept me, my friends, as much as they love me. And he was shocked. But, you know, with him, it was a little bit more of a sad story because the community just, like, shut him off. And yeah. nobody wants, other than Dan and I and a few more people, nobody wants to talk to him, which is their really loss. It's, it's their loss because um, that, person's, that person's being doesn't change. Who, right. they, who, who they go to sleep with and who they have an emotional connection with. Okay. But right. It's none of anyone's yeah. business. It doesn't make them any different. Right. So anyways, I, I don't want to go too much of a tangent about that, but I just want you to understand the backstory. So that's why when people say, oh, you guys just fight and it's all made up and it's all nonsense. And how do you guys forgive each other? It's because we've been friends for so long. It's, there's a lot of deep right, right. things that, 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 have, that have happened in our, in our friendship. Right. 
But, you know, we have to talk a little bit about, you know, for our fans that know the show and that follow you, the whole thing with the na naked Jenga was huge. <laughs> this past season. Naked Jenga, naked Jenga. Um, you know, I wanted to talk about those rumors about Adam being unfaithful to Reza. And I, I think you felt that Reza should have held Adam more accountable for his actions. And, and watching you in this season, I, I felt that you felt that he should have held him more accountable. Absolutely. Um, if, 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 if my home is a mess or is dirty, I can't, you know, go and judge other people's homes, right? And say, oh, well, look at the mess you've created. Oh, no, look, look, look within your own life there, right? So mm -hmm. it, you have to get to the root of the problem. If Adam wasn't sending out obscure, weird, sexual undertone texts whether it was to friends as a joke or it was to make a pass or whatnot no one will ever know right right the root of the problem was wrong so we have to get to the root of the problem if the texts weren't sent no rumors would have been started right right absolutely right. you once said i'm never getting married again yeah. now <laughs> you found your soulmate <laughs> And she's Jewish. She's one of our tribe. Yes. Your mom and dad are probably in heaven, right? Your they mom love. goes, Mikey June, you <laughs> made me. <laughs> they, they love her. She, and, and, and Paulina is just. Uh, is, she is gorgeous. I love, we love her. I'm a fan. I love her. Right? So, she's, she's, she's amazing. She's, she's amazing. I, so, Mike, I really I, because I you were her. single, you know, you got divorced. That smile can melt a woman's heart. And I'm sure you see all this. And then Polina, which is, oh, she is, we love her. Yeah. I'm telling you, we want a wedding here. <laughs> How did you know? I don't know this Mindy woman did. You have to hire Mindy Weiss to do the wedding. Yes. We just Next interviewed time. her. We just interviewed Mindy. So I wanted to ask you, how did you know? Because I'm sure, especially in the Persian Jewish community, they're probably going, oh, Mike, we want to introduce him to this Jew. All the time. You know that All the time. That was your soulmate. What, what moment did you decide, this is it? I, I, as cliche as it sounds, you just know when you know. And we just, we, we, we went on our first date and we started talking. And I just realized what a selfless, loving, nurturing person she is. She wasn't judgmental. She was open. Um, she's beautiful. She's cool. She's fun. And, you know, she didn't try to put me in a cage. She's, she said, look, you are who you are. I'm going to love you for who you are. Um, I don't care about what rumors I've heard. I care about how you're going to treat me and how you're going to be with me. And just be good to me and I'm going to be good to you. And we just had an understanding. And I'll tell you, even though she's beautiful, I didn't allow myself to judge my feelings about her based on her looks. I really wanted to have a deeper spiritual connection with somebody. And she's my best friend. We hang out all the time. I don't get tired of her. I miss her. I make sure to, you know, even when I'm at work, I, 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 I try to stop at, at her house to see her because I just want to give her some love and a kiss and a hug. And she just completes me. She I makes love me the feel. She makes me feel you good. Have with her kids, you have such a beautiful relationship with her children. The way you talk about them, it, I mean, it's just—it's so beautiful to see that. Really, it comes across so genuine on screen. All, all of it. It's, I love it. I, I try my hardest to be as genuine as possible. I, 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 I never thought I would date somebody with kids, um, but I love them. They are the highlight of of my day when i get to see them and hang out with them and we wrestle and we play and we chat and 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 just teaching them different things like you know mason is learning how to floss for instance just it is the most painful thing in the world to try to get a seven-year-old to floss because they're so sensitive and they're so scared it's something new to them so it's literally like we're wrestling just to get like through all the teeth but at the end when he's done and we're done fighting over flossing every tooth, he turns to me and goes, Mikey, I love you. Thank oh, you for, for caring about me so much. And that makes it all worthwhile because I want, him to, 
yeah. melts my heart <laughs> like chocolate in the sun. I'm telling you, just melts <laughs> my heart. And, and, and it makes the most stressful, hardest day so much better to, to, to just feel that pure love from two children. And they're not even mine, but right. I love them like they are. And I love their dad and I love their mom and I respect both of them. And, you know, I tell them all the time, I'm not your dad, but I'm going to be a positive role model in your life. I'm going to be here for you. And, you know, especially with, with the younger one, I'm always telling her, I have your back for life. Oh, You'll always be a wow. princess. Make sure you know you could reach for the stars because you can get there. Anything you want, you could do and be. And I'm always in her ear letting her know how amazing she is because I want her to always feel secure that I have her back and I'll be there as the third person in her life that loves her more than anything. I'm telling you, just watching you guys, we love her. I'm like, I told Karen the other day, forget me loving her. I'm just a yente. His mom is dancing in the kitchen, making yeah. Persian food. <laughs> she, she loves it. And imagine how, how cool my parents are and how open-minded my mom is and my dad is that they're okay with me dating a girl who has kids and they love her because they just want me to be happy. Right. You know? So it's, it's a big deal. I'm very blessed. Amazing. You know, Mike, being a therapist, I'm a therapist, I have to ask you this question. Do you feel that Shaz has been like one huge therapy session for yourself? Because you've grown so much over all the seasons. Shaz has been, definitely has been a therapy session for me. It's helped me express myself it's helped me find myself it's helped me become the man i am today um i used to have anger issues i used to uh, be the guy who wouldn't tolerate anyone speaking to me in any way other than respectful and it's given me a lot of patience because i realized that when people are hurting um they need a helping hand not to be kicked in the face right so I could have very, very easily jumped on a bandwagon with either Reza or MJ and gone against the other person. And it's very hard, especially in reality TV, to stay neutral because right. the viewers love drama. Yeah. Right? So we love for me, drama. Right, Etsy? We every, love every, drama. Everyone Everybody does. Loves right? drama. And, and that's what sells. But for me, I was like, I want to be the voice of reason. I want to be able to help nurture and love on these two and mend their relationship again because... Money's great. Making great television is awesome. Having fans is, is wonderful. But at the end of the day, real friendships are very hard to come by. Yeah. And we don't have, me and my friends don't have 36 years of friendship like you guys do. But I want to make sure that I give us a, a strong chance that we will. Bye. So, Mike, you know, you know I'm going to touch on this subject being the Israeli that I am. Tell me, Mama. <laughs> you went to Israel. And I yes. know that a lot of the crew, I thought, I actually thought it was funny. Your friends might not think it's funny, but I thought it was really funny that you wanted to take them to Israel and they were so nervous. And then you get to Israel. <laughs> and Karen goes, Etty, don't laugh. They might get mad. But I thought, really, I, I found it to be, because I was so excited you guys are going. And then I watch and, and you guys get stopped at Ben Gurion. And I was like, oh my God. And then I watched you and Reza at the Kotel with the rabbi, with the... the oh, that was the best. And that thing to fill him on. And I was so... I, I swear, I, from being like thinking it's really funny, to watching you at the Kotel that made me cry. I went through like bipolar reaction. <laughs> I wanted to... <laughs> I wanted to tell... I know you loved Israel because I know your personality. I know you went... I, I, I've been many times. It's an it's, it's amazing country. But why was it so important to you to take all your friends that are, you know, Christian, Muslim, and, and making that, closing that corner? I don't know. Um, I'm the only 100% Jew in the group. Reza is half Jewish. Um, and growing up, he wasn't very religious on either side, the Muslim or the Jewish side. Um, and having friends from different religious backgrounds, they don't really understand 
Judaism as a whole. They, oh, you got Shabbat tonight? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's much deeper just, just being cool. It's, it, there's a reason. It's our Sabbath. Oh, you know, uh, oh, high holidays. They, 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 they understood it, but they didn't really get it. So I wanted them to see this beautiful, rich, deep culture, this religion, this country that I am so connected to. Um, so I, I thought to myself, if this is my last season being on the show, I want to leave a legacy behind where I let not only my friends who I love and adore, but the world yeah. to see That's Israel. Right. See Israel. And, and, you know, and, it's, and see what it's about. See what we're fighting for. See what Israel is about. See what these people go through. Don't listen to the mainstream media nonsense, the bullshit that they feed us, right? right? This, this movement of anti-Semitism that's happening in the world where our people were, were slaughtered, you know, like they were worthless at one point because of the Holocaust. And, you know, I want them to see what we fight for, why the religion is so near and dear to our hearts, why we fight for it. So after that, I mean, it's crazy to me. I have people reaching out to me and say, I love that you're so close to your religion. I love the fact that you're Iranian. I wish I was Jewish. I wish I was Persian. To me, that means more than all the money I make from the show, all the fame that I get, because it really helps people expand their understanding. And until we understand, we're never going to feel something. We're never going to connect to our hearts. So I wanted people to really have a connection between their minds and their hearts to understand what our people have gone through and why we are so adamant about being proud and being open and being vocal about being Jewish. I want to give you a hug now because I love you. This I'll is, tell this you, is, this is this is real talk. You know because I, I, talk I know you because you know what? Um, what, my middle child is going to UC Berkeley right now. This she just congratulations, great thank school. You. So and she's uh, uh we lost your uh, she's like really? a real you know she that's what she does she her whole life since she was seventh grade she was kind of like an ambassador and she told me it's really hard and she told me that a lot of people that are jewish you know actors and actresses don't take the stand that you took because sometimes it puts you in an uncomfortable position yeah. and you're black about you is that again, it's because you're so authentic that you took that mission. You said, you know, Hashem gave me, God gave me a place. I need to take it to a good place, you know? And not a lot of people are willing to do that. Right. And you know, we really, I, I, I want to just say right now that you took a stand also in one of the episodes and I was really proud as a Jewish woman to see you. There was a time where you were eating outside of the Lee's Bakery on Pico Boulevard and a rabbi came by and asked you if you had put on tefillin phylacteries that day. And you said no. And he said, let's put them on right now. And you did. And you showed the world. You put those on in front of the whole world. That was like a huge mitzvah, a kiddush Hashem. And I was proud of you as a Jewish woman. Thank I, you. I, I, appreciate, I appreciate that. That was I appreciate an incredible that. thing that you did that. Um, I tell you, it, it's... I feel like I am just one spoke in this huge wheel, um, but each spoke counts. So, you know, I, I'm hearing stories of people taking mezuzahs off their doors because they're worried that they're going to get attacked. I hear that, you know, Jews are now taking off their yarmulke because they don't want people to know they're Jewish because they're afraid. People in Hollywood not speaking up about things. The more they silence us, the more chance we have of history repeating itself. Absolutely. And I will not stand by and allow that to happen. I love everyone. I love my friends. They're Muslim. Some are Christian. Some don't have any religion. Some are atheists. You know, whatever, wherever, what, whatever color. We're all one. We're human. Respect me. I respect you. And we're all good. Right. And especially, and I'll tell you something. This is another thing I wanted to say. If God forbid anything happened in America, and I tried to go back to Iran, the chances of them welcoming me back with open arms are very slim. But Israel will take me in and give me shelter, give me food, make sure I'm okay, take care of me, and, 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 and treat me like I am, I am a child of Israel. You're so, going to make but, me cry. <laughs> no, but this is the truth. This is the yeah. truth. So, so, so it's my duty to give the same love back, right? Beautiful. Yeah. So, so, so that's, 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 that's my where heart, I'm at. Really? I love it's you. Really thank, you. Hard. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank um, you. I, I, 
you know, it, it's, it's all about. We, you know, we, we picked, you know, we are going to have like um, athletes from Israel. And, you know, we were sitting and we were picking ambassadors that we felt that are, you know, really ambassadors for Israel. And the first name, Ken will tell you, we were sitting doing a conference with the producers. I go, I know the perfect guy, Mike. <laughs> I'm honored. Thank you. Uh, and I would not leave you alone because I knew. <laughs> it is all good. And I'm happy we got a chance to do it. This has been so much fun. It's because people like you who are just loyal fans of the show that the show continues to run. Hopefully we'll get another season. Um, nine years doing reality wow. TV. Wow. It's crazy. Wow. Most shows don't last this long. And I'll tell you something. Um, our show was, was rated the top show for Friday nights in Bravo's history. Wow. But yeah. it wasn't always on Friday. They switched it because no. it wasn't you know, on Friday. It yeah, wasn't so, on Friday. Right, exactly. So the way the network works is um, first they test you out. So they, they put you after one of their most popular shows. So when the show started, they put us on after Real Housewives of Atlanta. And they see if people switch the channel or they stay on. Our numbers were incredible, million plus every week. So they said, wow, you guys are, are good. Let's see if you guys can, uh, you know, second season, let's see if you guys can handle being on Thursday nights. So with a different lead in, we crushed it there. So they've moved this around from slot to slot, different times, different nights of the week. And every time our show comes out and we're like the little engine that could, we Aww. keep proving to them that our show is here to stay that we are representing the brown culture of the world, um, you know, the, the, the Persians, the Israelis, the Muslims, the, the, the Hispanic, the African-Americans, because we're very similar. We're, we're, we're family oriented. We're not, we're not Caucasian. You know, we, we have, we're olive complected. We're different. We look different. We eat different foods. We listen to different music. We're just different. And the world is now catching up it's okay to be different and people are seeking that. And that's why our show is so successful is because we give the world something different that they haven't seen on television and they love it and they're glued to their TVs and they follow us whether whatever night of the week we're on or whatever time. And you know, I was fun. afraid. Yeah, no, I was afraid. Like, you know, it was a lot of fun to watch you guys. No, I was afraid. I was like, Shabbat, uh, no one's going to watch the show, but people are watching. They stay home on Friday nights to watch the show and, Number one show on Bravo in the history of the channel on Friday nights. It's a huge awesome. accomplishment. Awesome. Yeah. You know, before we uh, T closes out, I just want to have one more dish, one more question to you. Just Absolutely. One, one last one before T closes us out. I wanted to ask you: Do you like the addition of Sarah to the show? And um, like, what what is her deal? Like, she's upset that her brother hooked up with destiny and uh i also can't believe that she dated r kelly i mean that wasn't touched upon that much but um what are your thoughts on all of that do you like the addition of her to the show and i think she's a very pleasant person she's very sweet um i think uh um she could have brought a lot more to the show she has a very dynamic background very dynamic story um but some people are just not meant for television, right? Um, I'm not saying that's th that has anything to do with her, but the production company obviously didn't feel like there was enough there that they could touch on. You know, the R. Kelly thing is a very touchy subject. Yeah. And uh, it's disgusting. Yeah. Um, he's, he's, a, he's a vile human being. Yeah. And I don't think they wanted to bring any light to his story because – it's something, it's, it's an avenue that, that, that Bravo didn't want to take. Uh, the media is, is, is covering it really well. And I think justice will be served and, and, and he'll get what's coming to him. Um, but at the end of the day, it was their call. I wish, I wish they would have followed her story more. She has a lot to tell. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as, as far as the brother's concerned, I feel like she didn't want, I think there were secrets about her brother that she didn't want to come out. You know, we saw, we, we saw a little bit of it on the show where he was acting uh, erratic at the dinner. Yeah. Um, and this is with, with someone like Destiny who would plan this beautiful dinner for him and get away in Vegas. And, you know, she liked him. She thought he was a nice guy. But 
you know, I started acting a little kooky and I think, uh, I think the, the, the production company saved him a little bit because uh, he did a lot more things that, that, that was told to me that, that they didn't show. Oh. Uh, yeah, he's, he's, a little, he's a little out there. You know, the first time I met him, he was threatening to take my chain, my, my, my medallion. I said, my brother, <laughs> don't, don't let, this, uh, don't let this, this looks fool you. You know what I mean? Come on. Take my chain. Eddie, what, would our, Eddie, what would our friend say? No, he didn't. No, he yeah, didn't. no, he, yeah. no, he did. <laughs> yeah, it's, that, that's a bad move. So, <laughs> Ken, you would probably pull a therapy session on him. <laughs> yeah, I was like, hey, man, you know, you can't have my chain. You know, you crazy. You know who I like? I'd like to see a little more of him is Sharvin. I'd like to see a little more of him. Great guy. I I, I spoke to him at length today. We're we're having a conversation. He's a He's, uh, he's just an encyclopedia of knowledge, the guy. You know, I'm looking to get a new car, so I was just picking his brain. And, you know, we're, 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 we're very, we have a, a bromance with each other. A, a, more of a masculine one, me and him, than me and, me and Reza do, because me and Reza can talk about anything. You know, we're very emotional with each other. And me and Shervin are more, like, manly and more, you know, like, Tough. macho. <laughs> you know, it's just different. But uh, I, I value both of their relationships. But... Yeah, I hope they bring Shervin back more next season. He's also a dynamic guy. Um, he's just afraid to, to tell too much, you know, on television. It's a lot because the world is very judgmental. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, stay after the show. I want to talk to you for a few oh, more minutes. Oh, we're going to talk more. Oh, my God. Yes. I, I thought I, I thought <laughs> talk too much already. I'm going to talk to you for a few minutes. <laughs> All right. Absolutely. Let's do it. Mike, thank you so much for being here today. My you are pleasure. an amazing guy, smart you. businessman, funny, and so, so genuine. Um, our our Los Angeles Jewish tribe is very lucky to have someone like you in our corner. Um, we feel so blessed that you decided to come. <laughs> I know I drove you crazy, <laughs> but you came and did this interview. I know how busy you are. I would love to invite you to a Shabbat dinner with Paulina and the kids. I would I love, would love that. For a traditional Shabbat dinner at our house. Um, we would like to thank all our followers for listening to this episode. Please remember, you can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Yentes in the City. You could also write us at dearyentes um, um, at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you and answer your letters on our weekly advice column. We'd like to thank our team, Shimi and Sharon, for all the behind the scenes um, and the work that you do to bring this episode together. Lastly, we would like to thank our sponsors, Soft Smart System International and Conquest Realty Investments. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We have a lot more coming. Don't forget to watch the new and juicy season of Shaz of Sunset Woo! on Bravo TV. It's the absolute best. This season is the best season. Until next time, this is Etty Elkis and Karen Cohen, and we're Yentas in the City. Thank you so much.